Uh, but hi, everybody. Uh, I'm going to be monitoring chat because we're going to have questions coming in, but I also have questions pre-written. But as always, we're going to start with introductions because some of you might not know me. Uh, and I am Nita Chris or Julia, um, the community manager for Neverwinter. And I am here today with a special guest because I don't think many of you have met Brett. Uh, maybe if you've watched some champion stuff, you might be aware of like seen him before. Uh, but I'm going to let Brett introduce himself um, before we start digging into the questions. So Brett, hi. Hi, everybody. My name's Brett, and I'm the new executive producer here at Cryptic Studios on Neverwinter. And as Julia mentioned, I am also still currently the executive producer on Champions Online, and I help do some of the stuff like costume contests and whatnot. But uh, right now, my focus is actually more here on the Neverwinter side. I've actually worked at Cryptic Studios for, I think, just a little over three years now. Um, I think in February was my third year anniversary. Um, but uh, this is my first uh, time taking over and stepping onto the Neverwinter project in any official capacity. I know some of the developers on it. I used to work closely with the designers in particular. And then, as you may or may not know, Matt Powers was the executive producer prior to me. He took over after Chris Whiteside. And unfortunately, he decided to leave Cryptic Studios. So they were looking around for someone to step in and help run Neverwinter. And they knew that I played a lot of Neverwinter. So they were like, OK, cool, Brett, how do you feel about stepping sort of out of the design role and into the executive producer role in Neverwinter? And I said, sure, I'll go ahead and do that. Sounds like fun. And that's how I wound up to be here. Um, so I'm going to I'm going to tune in and say my first one of my first memories of Brett, um, because uh, Brett and I hadn't ever worked together like, on, you know, I've been on the network to team since the beginning. Uh, and uh, one of my first memories is, you know, he ping, I got a message on teams one day, our internal um, chat program and uh, just saying, hey, there's something on the blog. I think I can't remember which blog it was, but it was something that um, was inconsistent or didn't make much, didn't make much sense. And so when Brett started as EP, that memory was comforting because it meant that he knew what to look for. Like he he knew when there was some some inconsistency. So uh, that's always reassuring uh, because it's nice to know you know someone knows the product. So I have a lot of confidence in Brett. But I know that there's a lot of questions um, already coming in. Uh, <laughs> uh, things like about what what can we ask never uh, about what can we ask never enter questions. Just everything you can ask whatever you want. We just choose to not answer some stuff if we if we can't. Uh, if we don't have an answer or you know we might answer something that you we might answer in a way that might not be as finite as people would like but we're going to try i've got about 40 questions uh already gotten uh, ahead of time but a lot of them have already started coming in just like one of the questions is uh have you ever played neverwinter and i think brett uh talked about yeah. about that but um i will go into a very specific question that what, what was asked which is what class do you play all right, so the primary class that I play is Barbarian. I started playing back when it was known as Great Weapon Fighter, so I've been around since prior to the class renamed, but I think it obviously fits pretty well as Barbarian too. So, and uh, perhaps, maybe surprisingly, I actually play Barbarian Sentinel, the tanking paragon primarily, although I do have a reasonably de decent DPS loadout for doing sort of endgame content as well. Um, I've been playing that character for, like I mentioned, actually a little bit over three years, so he's fairly reasonable reasonably end game. Um, and I, prim I primarily play on PC, although I have also played a bit on the consoles as well, mostly just so that I can test stuff out and, and make sure that, that things are working on those platforms as well too. But in terms of where I started, I just started on PC because at the time I was actually traveling a lot and I was having to play off a laptop. I was doing interviews and stuff before I started at Cryptic Studios. And so I was forced to play off laptops and then later on transitioned to when I got a nice new desktop rig playing on that. So. Cool, thank you. Um, yeah, there was, uh, there was a number of questions about that, but I think I'm going to bounce between Brett-specific questions and game-specific, uh, just to make sure we cover all topics. Uh, so we'll come back to, to your kind of vision and experience that never went a bit more, but one of the first things that came up on this in the chat, which is also a question, uh, which is, uh, uh, what is the vision for professions and the masterwork system? Uh, and then, which had a second part, which is, uh, when will the Sharandar recipes be available? Um, so... Yeah, people just want more information on what's going on with professions and specifically masterwork. All right. So professions, obviously, you know, they've gone through a couple of small updates here recently to try to collapse things down and make it a little bit easier. Some of that is for infrastructural reasons. The profession systems internally is obviously very complex with the number of different recipes, the number of different strats, et cetera. So 
the gist of it is that the well, there will be work on the professions sometime in the near future, but I'm not going to promise any immediate dates. We are not currently in the midst of any massive profession overhaul. The Sharandar recipes are unfortunately not something that I inherited. Obviously, those I'm stepping in. I've only been on the Neverwinter project officially for about a month, but I do know from talking with the team and seeing where the current things are at is that the Sharandar recipes are not currently on the forefront of additions. So it's going to be a bit longer before we get any updates to specifically masterwork professions. Although we are going to start looking at what we can do to sort of try to update uh, current profession recipes as well, try to keep things sort of relevant and ongoing. But unfortunately, uh, for example, I think it would be unlikely, given where things are at right now, to expect to see any significant profession updates with the next module. I know that's going to make some people sad. I have a uh, maxed out perfection workshop on my live character as well, too, and I'm kind of waiting for some stuff to, to do with it. But in the meantime, I'll just continue to grind out Hearthstone rings for cash. Thank you. Um, I we do have a question that just came up that wasn't part wasn't uh, on the forums, but and it's something uh, that's an issue going on. And actually, you I think you were the first person to uh, point it out to the team last week, and that is the uh, the lo the companion the loadout and companion powers. Um, and I mean, I do believe we have good news on that front. Um, Specifically, what's the what's the question then on the uh, that, like basically uh, you know yeah, yeah, yeah. why are the it's a bug unfortunately um, so we have had we've had a few issues with loadouts in terms of swapping we've been trying to clean up some of the technical underpinnings beneath that unfortunately um, the fix that was relating to the enchantments not being swapped correctly on loadouts introduced a problem with some companion player slots um, not being uh, not being swapped correctly unfortunately this was just a flaw in our testing we implemented a fix and then didn't see that uh, because the bug wasn't reproducing when we were testing it with the loadouts we were using, we didn't see it. And when I went to live, unfortunately, we had a bigger testing set. So the good news is that's already fixed internally. And as soon as we can get a patch out to all the platforms, which I think will be this Thursday for PC mm -hmm. and next Tuesday for consoles, that will be fixed. Yep. So I apologize. It's especially annoying since I run both tank and DPS loadouts because I uh, can't just reapply companion powers to each. I've got to sort them out every when that happens. So. Yep. Uh, but just yeah, to reiterate, uh, the fix for PC will be on Thursday and um, the, the, the fix uh, on console will be on Tuesday of next week. So, uh, All right, so some more questions. Um, ah, there it is. Uh, where is the roadmap for this game for next month? So yeah, uh, that was a question that was also on the forums a lot, which is, uh, is there going to be a roadmap? It can, is it one that, are we going to share one? So. so yes, the, the plan is here, and you'll have to give me a little bit more time as I get together the roadmap. I'd like to have roughly a roadmap of sort of the next year um, for what Neverwinter is looking at. We obviously have some pretty good short-term planning in terms of what's coming up for the next six months, um, but the six months beyond that is actually what I'm kind of involved with right now. So I don't want to put anything out there right now because some of the endeavors that we're looking at, say, post-August are still somewhat speculative. Um, and as a result, I don't want to promise anything. There are definitely still releases planned for the end of this year, and there will be some releases planned likely for early next year, too. Um, when I say releases, I mean fairly big releases. But the shape of four of those is still under some internal discussion and negotiation. So rather than publish potentially very misleading information now, I'm going to wait a little bit till we have some more sol solidity behind that. It's like, okay, cool, yeah, this is very much what we're going to go accept, and we'll, and we'll work beyond that one. So in the short term, we do have you know good visibility over the next several months, but I don't want to present any long-term ones. But yes, we will try to get a good roadmap out so you guys know kind of where we're going and what we're doing and offer feedback on it. Well, thank you. Um, so a few th things have popped in chat. Uh, Black Druid Wolf, how about we let Brett pick questions? Uh, he's He can read chat, and if there's questions that attract him, he's able, you know, yeah. he, he can speak up. I'm, the one I'm <laughs> randomly staring at right now is, mm -hmm. Brett, what's your favorite dungeon? Um, so there's ones that I enjoy running a lot myself, uh, and there's ones that I think, you know, I, I think I really enjoyed, like, especially the first time that I did them, so I'll, I'll answer two parts. The ones that I sort of really enjoy running a lot. I'm actually somewhat partial to the Infernal Citadel, simply because, uh, you know, when it first came out, I was do, doing it a lot, and it was, I think that I enjoy doing the bosses. The final boss is tough for, I think, new people, but uh, it's a fun thing, and I enjoy doing it as a tank, since I'm mostly tanking it. Uh, although I have run it as a, as a deep PS as well. Uh, and then in terms of just the ones that I think gave me some of the coolest impressions that I really enjoy doing a lot the first time, I really like Illusionist Gambit just because, you know, I think it's fun and all the very serious backgrounds and the hazard mechanics are awesome. And I really, really enjoyed the Tiamat trial simply because the music is epic. And when Tiamat comes out and casts a huge shadow over pretty much the entire arena, I thought it was really awesome. So it uh, was really, really cool. 
and I enjoyed that, especially so left a really good first time impression. Both the Illusionist Gambit skirmish and the Tia Matral, I thought both had really really solid first impressions. But it's something that I kind of like. I play a lot and kind of enjoying. I actually, like I said, I really enjoy Infernal Citadel quite a bit as a as a good mix of challenge uh, and things. And I feel like you can kind of speed it up too. Like since I'm doing as a tank, I'm always trying to figure out like, hey, how how many uh, of the mobs between bosses can I pull in a single go that we can handle without dying if we chain together a bunch of CC. So I think there's a lot of uh, expression of skill and group uh, group work in those sections. So you can you can go slow or you can speed it up. And if you have a really coordinated group, you can go really fast through it. And I think that's a great kind of mechanic for kind of like playing through the dungeons. Thank you. Uh, and I'll, I'll, throw, I'll give a shout out since he's in my background. Mm -hmm. uh, Trial of the Mad Mage, obviously. Also <laughs> very, very challenging. Lots of fun. You know, uh, I, I, it's it was it's a I think a very in depth boss fight, but I like Callister's personality, and I think his personality comes across great through all the phases of Trial of the Mad Mage as well. Mm -hmm. No, and I love the, the visuals of that fight are awesome as well. Um, so we have two topics that are kind of fighting for number one, but I'm going to go with uh, the bug fixes because it was also a question in the forums, and it's showing up here only not as specific. People are bringing up different bugs, so kind of summarize it as uh, what is the priority of bug fixes and is there a backlog uh, backlog of bugs uh, and what are our plans to fix them? So we do have a backlog of a number of bugs, but we don't have a backlog of all of the bugs. So if you have a very explicit, especially if it's something that's kind of unique or special to like a couple of weird interactions, like, oh, this one class power doesn't work with this one artifact in these circumstances, um, please, you know, put, if you can, a fairly detailed um, bug report up. We're doing, I'm definitely trying to push for getting a uh, better internal documentation of our list of known bugs so that we can kind of hit them in fell swoops. And as a whole, we're going to be taking some initiatives to improve sort of what I call developer quality of life and player quality of life over the next sort of rest of this year in particular, and then continuing forward after that. And what I mean by that is fixing issues that both annoy our internal development team, like, you know, when they're trying to address problems with uh, various systems or or create new, new, uh, new content and features, trying to make sure that they can do that faster, easier, and more reliably, but also looking at just player player quality of life, which generally is oftentimes bug fixes. Sometimes it's balance changes. Um, sometimes it's new features that allow you to do stuff uh, easier, better, etc. So we have a list of those going through. And for example, you know, we're looking at quality of life fixes, which would be technically kind of new features, for example, improvements to bag and inventory sorting. And I'm even going to try to push for some companion sorting because I have a lot of companions and going through my companion player power list um, is very tricky. And then sometimes just list going through my companions is tricky because I, I named some of them really dumb things. And it's sometimes hard for me to find them in the companion list when you have a, a few hundred companions now. So I, I don't want to have to pay to rename them all, but uh, hopefully we can get some some better sorting and filtering for companions. So there's some quality of life issues like that and in general bugs. And I know this has been coming up a lot, so I'll directly address it right now is that, yes, we are currently working on BART fixes. Um, there are a number of uh, changes that we're working on for BART. Some of them will be doable. I know there's a number of bugs. Some of them will be fixable um, relatively quickly. Some of them will take more long-term fixes because they require more technical updates, um, whereas others are just sort of issues with, um, you know, that can be handled more on a sort of an individual basis and relatively quickly. We're focusing first on the Bard Minstrel, and then we'll be looking at some Songblade stuff. Um, and the time frame for that is hopefully, it's not going to be instantaneous, so I'm not going to say, cool, next week Bard fixes, but we're hoping to get it out sooner rather than later. We're not pushing it out, you know, six months or anything like that. We're trying to get some changes in specifically for the minstrel here hopefully in the next couple months i'm hope hopefully in a sooner time frame but again we want to make sure that the changes are tested thoroughly that we don't introduce new bugs there's you know a lot of edge case testing that has to go in with class powers so we'll do what we can to make sure uh, but an overall balance definitely trying to accept, trying to focus especially on the minstrel right now and then there will be more after that you know we're, we're pushing to get other fixes into it's not just to say it'll be only barred but from a throughput kind of standpoint um we can't for example tackle all the classes simultaneously and uh we'll try to we're trying to put emphasis on making sure we do um good changes that are that are well received and, and you know will hold up to the test of time for each of those uh ones that we do tackle i'm kind of pushing for maybe wizards to be next after that but we'll see we're going to gather some feedback and look at some look at a combination of data and use cases to address but we definitely have both internal knowledge player knowledge and data backs up that that the bard needs um some improvements and as well as some bug fixes thank you uh so yeah i'm seeing so it's funny because i'm seeing in the chat other people bring up and you know you started talking about classes and uh we actually had a section of the questions i compiled earlier which is uh um, classes and they, you know there were issues brought up where um, uh, one of the questions I actually thought was really good was do we tr do we track metrics on class power usage to determine if they need to be reworked due to low use? Um, 
Yes, but not in the way that the players are probably thinking that would allow us to identify like very consistent usage statistics or best usage statistics. We know, for example, what players equip in loadouts. We have some information that helps us get some information about um, recent equips and things like that, too. But it doesn't tell us um, as much as we might want to know about like certain powers, for example, are just going to be more popular because they're sort of bread and butter abilities, um, while certain other powers are intended to be more niche case abilities for like a cool, this, you know, fight really calls for additional CC or we're going through some, some mobs between bosses, et cetera, that, that we want to do something with, et cetera. So that's why those that data can be somewhat misleading. Um, what we do have though, however, is some overall aggregate metrics where we can, for example, we can compare classes to each other. We can look at performance in things like dungeons and trials, um, even like master versions of trials, et cetera. So we can get a better aggregate understanding of, of what's being used. But to note, like I said, we don't want to make it so that like all powers and all like counter powers, at will powers, et cetera, are used uh, interchangeably with high frequency because some of them are intended to be more special case things. Like, you know, on my Barbarian Sentinel, I don't use Ignore Weakness, which is a stamina refreshing uh, power in a lot of cases because it's not necessary. Uh, and it's better for me to have threat generating abilities or other defensive abilities instead. But there are specific fights and other specific cases where I very much use Ignore or weakness so that's just kind of the the balance that's expected out of some of those powers but again again if we see that a power is just never used and has no usages or the community feels that way we definitely want to try to take a look at it um but at the same time like i said it kind of comes down to if the class we feel has a good mix of powers and they're playing well and they're playing fun um it's not usually at the highest of our, our priorities to go back and look at the powers that they're not using but if there's a class that has very few vi viable choices and is having problems and all of their options seem poor that is a great incentive for us to do something which kind of ties into for example while we're looking at some of the things with the bard minstrel cool uh so another topic that uh, i think people have gotten impatient uh but just by the way uh, heads up there's a lot of questions if i don't get to it doesn't mean we're not going to get to it it just you know there's only I can only take one question at a time uh but it's come up in chat and it was also brought up in the forums and uh it was one of those broad topic questions because a lot of people asked about it and that is what does the future hold for strongholds uh, so strongholds, we are. There's a two-part plan for that. Um, the the big things like, are we going to do like a massive revamp of strongholds, or are we going to like substantially change or add a whole bunch of new features? That's going to be a little bit farther out because it's going to take some fairly heavy lifting on the technical end to make changes to strongholds. However, we've looking we're looking at something hopefully here near term i'm not going to say short term because um it's still being planned out but we're looking at basically what i would consider a refresh of the shops and other things that are sold in strongholds so that there are more viable options to spend guild marks and uh you know stronghold currencies on etc so that you know turning in vouchers and things like that has more value in terms of either things like consumables or the items that are available you know we've also toyed with some of the idea of putting more uh more refinement consumables into the guild shops too so guild marks have a lot more permanent ongoing value and we don't have to you you know, like, you know, up item levels or, or add specific new artifacts or armor to the guilds, uh, the guild pretty frequently. So the refresh of sort of what's sold throughout the, the guilds, uh, strongholds will be updated, hopefully relatively in the near term, but again, not super short term, um, but a larger fundamental change to strongholds where we have to look at that and we have to kind of plan that out. So it's not going to be sometime in the next three months and it's probably not going to be in the next six months. It would take a, a decent bit of work, but we are in the process of sort of specking out what that would be and, and how much it would take and the reality is that you know we always weigh that against other things that we can do we only have x amount of throughput especially on sort of like heavy feature reduce or systems so we always have to say like, cool do we want to do strongholds now or do we want to work on professions etc there's a lot of the same people involved in those kind of discussions which is why we can only tackle a small subset of those things at any given time thank you um so there was also some questions um yeah it kind of ties in with demo and uh you know the the random cues um so Yama 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 had said, when is public queuing going to be relevant again? Right now it's completely dead because the game is too hard for most new players, so people only private queue. And kind of to side, a side question of that that came up uh, was people wanted to know why we pulled demo, what's going on there? Um, so basically the broad question is, what's going on with uh, public queuing? So talking a bit more about queues and, and sort of the health of queues, that's sort of an initiative that um, I'm putting forth to the Neverwinter team that we want to spend some effort here for the remainder of the year working on. Uh, specifically, the Demogorgon trial was removed from random trial queue because the success rates were very low and it was very, very disheartening and not a great situation. You know, we put the Demogorgon rework in, but hoping that sort of, you know, it would be a little bit challenging, but hopefully the community would be able to find a way to sort of work through it and, and beat it 
it, and that's not the case. You know, we definitely know from both anecdotal experience, in, 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 meaning how we play, as well as with the data, that that didn't happen. And it was not the success rates were not going up. We didn't see an upward trend over time. And that's why it was ultimately remo removed from the random trial queue because it was failing to hit its criteria as a part of the random trial queue. Now, for queues as a whole, you know, we're looking at what we can do to make success rates more consistent to be to comments, you know, some of the easier queues, say, for example, the dungeon queue, we expect success rates for that to be pretty high. And that's it should be a good introductory experience for people that want to get in, kind of learn how to do dungeons, be able to get through it in a reasonable amount of time, etc. And then when you move on to some of the more advanced queues, like the random advanced dungeon queue or the random trial queue, you're faced with challenges that are a little bit tougher. Um, it may not be a guaranteed victory if you're going into some of those, especially if you have a if you wind up in a public random group that has a ton of new people but we do want sort of the rewards to incentivize people you know taking some of that risk uh, and trying for some of the harder content but you know we haven't been as consistent and i'll be blunt with in terms of neverwinter over the past several years about what it is that we're trying to get out of queues what the challenge rating is acceptable for a public audience and what's better for a private audience uh and you know there's definitely been some difficulty sort of as we've built new new dungeons and new trials and other things and you know should they go in the public queue or should they not go in the public queue? looking at you know i'll be blunt i just mentioned the infernal citadel which is a dungeon that i love i have run that almost exclusively privately i've only done public with it I, a couple of times and the Public experiences are extremely varied. You know, going into specifically the second and third boss, uh, Zafiel and the the Hellfire Engine. Those are fights that are you know not particularly accommodating for people that don't understand the mechanics somewhat in advance, especially the bombs and the the Hellfire Engine. Like you kind of need to know what's going on, how to position them, and how to kind of stretch out the time. Problems related to like sort of like you know how how uh, difficult the DPS charts checks are at the end. Uh, we can solve those a bit more easily through balancing. But there's kind of that knowledge thing there too with something like the bombs, where no matter how good your DPS is, if somebody drops a bomb in the middle and, and takes out all the tiles, there's nothing you can do about that. And that can make for a very difficult public experience. And that's not what we want to do. So as we build new dungeons, new trials, and everything like that, we're very much looking now is like, should this be something that we are building for a public facing? And is this something that we are building for more of a private facing? And if it possible, we are looking now sort of as we go into the future, we, when we do something, say like a trial, we're very much going to look at, okay, we are going to have a private facing version, which will likely be harder and likely have better rewards. And we will have a public facing version, which will likely require a little less coordination and collaboration. We'll probably still have some hopefully fun and cool, unique mechanics. Um, and the rewards will probably geared more towards the traditional sort of uh, queue based rewards. But at the same time, it's something that you can do in a more, you know, non-communicative, very sort of uh, pickup group style fashion. And there's and there's been some lessons learned there, you know, in terms of how the dev team has been approaching that we've definitely been hitting it pretty hard. Um, some of you may know that we've been doing some limited testing on some new what we call normal versions of trials mm -hmm. uh, as well. And we've gotten a lot of great learnings out of that. And we've fundamentally changed some of the mechanics in terms of how, you know, for example, tank swaps. I'll just go bluntly into that. Those are very difficult in a public environment, uh, especially when the tanks aren't in the same party, which happens quite a lot because you don't have great awareness as to what the other tank's doing if he has like a stacking debuff on him what stack is it at should i switch i don't really know can the guy communicate me with, communicate with me neverwinter is a very international game and we often have people in the same party especially in pickup parties that do not speak the same language so you can't rely even on text or chat sometimes because they may not speak the same language as you so we need mechanics that players can pick up, learn, and understand relatively quickly with just whatever's exposed in front of them into the game. And that's what we're pushing very much towards, especially as, as I mentioned, future normal versions of trials and perhaps even dungeons um, being separate from the more private and or quote unquote harder master versions of dungeons. So hopefully that gives a good synopsis of sort of a lot of things queue related and how, it, how we're going to be building new dungeons, trials, skirmishes, et cetera, and, and how those will be going forward. And we are certainly also going to look at a bit of a sort of, I would call it a rewards balancing look at sort of how queues are set up and whatnot. There's definitely, I think, a sort of a bit of a time imbalance where right now random trial queue is sort of the massive major source of astral diamonds that a lot of players engage in both just due to time and also due to sort of relative success rates. Um, and we don't want that to necessarily be like the only place. We want to encourage people still to do dungeon queues, skirmish queues, and the advanced dungeon queue. And that may that will involve some changes to, for example, like if we want to keep the Infernal Citadel in the random advanced dungeon queue, we may have to make some more changes to it. And we also may have to make incentivize the rewards more for that. And it also may mean that, you know, if random trial queue, which is most of the maps in the current trial queue are a very high success rate and fairly low time investment, we may have to shift some of the rewards from random trial queue to dungeon queue, skirmish queue, advanced queue, et cetera, to, to balance those out so that if people feel like they want to run dungeon queues more, or skirmish queues more, there's definitely a better payoff per time um, spent in some of those. 
So big yeah. topic. Went yeah. through a lot of variants. If I didn't cover it all, I apologize. But hopefully that gives you guys a little bit of idea about the future, the now, and kind of where we're going with cues. Mm -hmm. uh, and you uh, I mean you talked you talked about uh, rewards, which is you know great because one of my questions uh, was uh, is there a plan to make rewards more enticing and separate it into two, which I am going to call out because it's been showing up in chat a lot, which is the RNG uh, in places like uh, the hardcore Vault of Stars, so specifically the rings, uh, the bands. Um, People would like to know if we have any plans to change it to make it a little bit more friendly. And then also, uh, people have also asked about the uh, update lockboxes to the Noxbox system. Um, the Noxbox was something that came out um, last year for a limited time, uh, and it actually showed uh, what rewards you were going to get and um, like how many. You know, it, it, it was very clear like what you were working towards. Um, so players just wanted to know more about what our plans were, specifically about uh, rewards, RNG, and lockboxes. All right, so talking a little bit about, uh, I'll talk about rewards and sort of the randomized nature of rewards. Um, overall, sort of like slightly randomized nature of rewards, I think overall are reasonable and fine. And we want to, you know, a lot of RPGs in general have some degree of randomization in their rewards. However, um, there's definitely been a bit of a trend in some of the modules and, and some of the various dungeons as well and, and trials and reward chests um, of having exceptionally low odds on some things. And sometimes, you know, you can, and I've, I've run a foul, even some of the events in the past have had this thing um a while back for example i was trying to get uh, my broomstick and i ran the odds on what it was going to take to get the enchanted bristles i think it was it was one of the key no, it was sort of the witch's sash and i ran the odds on how long it would take and i had a statistically very reasonable chance of never getting it with the amount of time i had left in the event and that's the kind of randomization that i don't want to see in Neverwinter. I want it to feel like um, if we're going to do randomized rewards and there's something that is very desirable for players to get and isn't just like a vanity pet or something a bit more unique like that too, that they have a reasonable chance of getting it with a sort of reasonable amount of repetition. And if we don't, we need some kind of fallback system or, or streak breaker system or something along those lines. It could take the form of a shop where it's kind of like the weapons in some of the trials where you, know, you can get the weapons randomly, but if you don't, after you complete the trial 20 or so times, you can just buy them from a shop. And that's a way to sort of mitigate or provide like a streak breaker system um and we haven't it, it's not due to ignorance it's just due to unfortunately time where we unfortunately put a few things into reward chests or other things like hardcore boss or whatnot or or some things where it's like cool I, you know for my role and my class i want this specific item that is on a loot table that is gigantic and the odds of me getting that one specific item are very low and i could run that content or open that reward chest or do whatever it is you know, a hundred times and never get it. And that's not the kind of randomization that we want. We don't want something that you can do that, you know, and I'll be blunt. And this is something we're discussing and fixes is that the Sharndar bounties, for example, there's one specific piece of companion equipment that I still want out of the Sharndar bounties that I can't get. And I still do the bounties pretty regularly, but the odds of me statistically ever getting that one piece of companion equipment that I still want and haven't gotten are extremely low now. So filling out that collections page is, is probably not viable with the current uh, system that you know in terms of how it randomized the wards and the frequency you get them and that's something that I, I don't want to say it doesn't have to be something instantaneous i'm not expecting you to necessarily do like three bounties uh, a day and then within 10 days have every single item on that collections page but you know i've been doing it for many 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 months now and still don't have it and it hurts my soul a little bit that i still haven't been able to get that one item so we're looking at some changes to some of that so that uh, there are avenues to accomplish getting the things that you want to get um not necessarily making it easier or, or i'm sorry not making it easy um but making it so that there's a level of consistency there and we'll find ways to do it again it may not be the same for everything um and we may not be able to put like shops in all the dungeons to have fallback options but at the same time there shouldn't be things that are like you know a three percent drop rate on a table that has you know it's occupied with a ton of other things that you don't want that are fighting for your chance to get that one thing that you do want well, thank you. Uh, and then um, uh, Harper uh, asked a question in chat, and it was also showing up in the. Um... There was a sorry. There was a second part to that question after rewards. You mentioned... Oh, uh, yeah. When we were talking about oh uh, yeah, the lock. You talked about RNG, and uh, the other part was the update lock boxes to the Nox boxes. Yeah. Thank you. So lock boxes and and Nox boxes. Uh, the Nox boxes seem to go over positively. That was you know I I was not on the team when the Nox box initiative went through, but from everything that I've heard, that seemed to go very positively. So expect to see something more in the way of knock boxes and perhaps a complete change of how lock boxes are done on neverwinter um it's potentially going to be a very large departure 
um, from how we've done lock boxes in the past, but the general reception of knock boxes seem to be high. Um, I'm generally a fan of streak breaker mechanics for anything that's RNG related as well, as well as things like milestone rewards. So expect to see some changes to how lock boxes are done in Neverwinter in the near future. Cool. Thank you. Uh, and yes, yeah, so Harper had asked, and it was also in the forums, which is, um, let me see how they had worded it. Uh, are there any more plans for big system changes? We've had a lot recently in Chance, Combat, Companion, etc. It would be nice to not have any more whiplash. We're very much going to try to avoid any kind of big systems whiplash uh, in terms of reworking combat systems or anything along those lines. If anything, we're going to try to work within the constraints of the existing systems to improve them in any ways that we can. And when I say improve in terms of like if there are pain points or problems or people don't understand how X is working, rather than trying to invent a new system to solve said problems, we're just going to try to, you know, polish and improve the existing system some. So much less focus on trying to sort of, you know, solve problems through new systems. You know, like for example, the, the combat rework and the rating systems was done to help address problems with downscaling and upscaling and make it so that we could do some things. Like for example, players can participate in Harvester right now, even if they're at very low um, initial item levels because they can be upscaled. It gives us a lot of flexibility with things like events, but there's some other areas where it's, you know, like as certain stats go up, it causes stats to go down and we're looking at ways to help mitigate the the flaw of like, you know, constantly seeing your defense go down if you're, if you're playing in a DPS role and putting on a higher item levels, things like that too. But we don't want to do that by making a new rating systems or something along those lines. We're very much trying to avoid that. Um, so we're looking at ways to improve and mitigate the problems with the systems that don't involve making new systems. Oh, thank you. Uh, and then um, another question had come up, uh, and uh, I believe both Dead Mano and Nova had kind of uh, alluded to this or asked specifically, which is um, what kind of noticeable changes can we expect going forward? And does the embrace requisition mean anything for us? Now, I know so that that's more of a business changes, thing. It'll... Oh, sorry, go ahead. What kind of middle school changes? What kind of noticeable? Oh, noticeable changes. Oh, right, right, right. So the, the Embracer group, for the most part, in, in the whole, it's it's a combination of Embracer and Gearbox. So we, we fall under Gearbox Publishing right now, which is a little bit of a different division than Gearbox Software. Gearbox Software, the, the guys that make Borderlands and such, Gearbox Publishing is actually a new division that, you know, Cryptic Studios and, uh, and some possibly some other future studios that I can't talk about will be will be found other. Uh, but for the most part, there's not a whole lot of change to the day-to-day -day of Neverwinter. Um, they're very much kind of hands-off. You know, they, they know that Neverwinter and Star Trek and Champions and whatnot are doing. They've got you know full views of everything that we're doing, what our forecasts are, how the games are doing, et cetera. And they're like, cool, we like that keep doing it. We're not going to try to jump in and interfere. They are going to be looking at, you know, some of these sort of publishing side of things, things related to, for example, marketing and other areas. And so they may get involved in like, for example, trying to push for some more elements of like marketing and other things like that too. But they're not coming in saying like, you guys need to change X or, or do Y or, you know, make the gameplay more like X or, or use these, you know, D and D themes for your next module or anything like that too. They're not involved in the creative decisions and they're generally not involved super directly in the business decisions, but they may be involved loosely on in some of the, sort of marketing and other kind of tie-in uh, things that we do here in the future. But again, overall, um, pretty hands-off and they don't want to sort of mess with uh, the way things are being done um, and kind of letting us uh, evolve, you know, that they are providing support where we need it. And if there's an issue that we really want to do, um, we can reach out to them. But they're right now, for example, more more interested in terms of like, you know, what's Cryptic going to do in the future, apart from Neverwinter, Star Trek, and Champions, what games might you be working on next? And they're kind of looking to uh, what are sort of our R&D and future efforts are. Uh, so I'm seeing, uh, I'm seeing some uh, repeat questions that we answered earlier. So um, this uh, stream will be uh, put on a VOD on, uh, on YouTube. So if you miss something from the beginning, I'd rather not repeat the questions just because we have a lot to get through, uh, but you can always catch up uh, afterwards. Um, so kind of shifting gears a little bit to future development. Uh, I know we've talked a, a little bit about that, but specifically um, one of the questions that came up was, in the near future, will there be a hunt system similar to the one we had in Barovia? So there is some stuff coming with the upcoming module, and I'm not going to play spoiler just yet because the marketing team would kill me. Um, but there is very likely going to be something similar to the hunt system in Barovia in the very near future. So I don't want to go too much into it, but there's some really cool stuff. And, uh, and it's uh, definitely inspired by the Barovia hunt system, although it's actually at a larger scale than that. So expect some cool things here. Um, again, I expect some marketing for that to start hopefully here in the next couple of months. Julie would actually kind of know a little more, I think, the insights into where that's headed to me. Yeah, I should probably follow up on that. <laughs> yeah, I'm kind of I'm kind of walking into things mid mid stride, so I, I know I've got, a, got my head wrapped around, but I don't want to like like mess up 
the longer term marketing plans by revealing too much right now. <laughs> um, but that kind of leads to the next thing, which is also something that's been in chat, uh, which is a lot of a lot more like uh, content for end game players. Um, so things like Reaper's Challenge, um, players want to know if we're looking at exploring maybe other other systems like that or the specific question is what was uh, can we get something like the Bervia hunt system for regular queues so uh, kind of players can establish the uh, set the conditions as opposed to stop reapers. spoiling things you gotta you guys gotta, gotta <laughs> stop spoiling things by guessing what it is that we're trying to do here so uh yeah we're trying to look at things like the reapers challenge and whatnot and, and elements like that that you know add uh fun ways to like tackle content and stuff like that too you know i've enjoyed doing the, the reapers challenge uh, quite a bit and we know that the community has responded pretty well to it so um very much so we're looking at what we can do with that and we're looking at there's like i said you'll have to wait and see hopefully with the stuff that we're working on will provide some suitable challenges for end game players that is still something that's not as not as basically requires as much sort of training and practice as something like the various the really hardcore trials do but it's still something that's pretty challenging and taxing and takes some pretty consistent group efforts it's not something you can just walk in and necessarily expect to beat super easily that it'll it'll put up a, a reasonable bit of challenge while still um, being quite doable but we're again some of that's still in flux and we'll see where it goes uh, now, I, I actually liked uh, this, how this question was uh, was phrased in the forums, and I'm kind of, you know, I get a little bit of the sense of it on chat as well, which is, how would you reassure your existing players when looking ahead regarding commonly stated concerns? So how would, how, what is, you know, when you're coming into the team, what is the kind of reassurance you want to provide the community? I mean, all I can say is that uh, I play the game on a very regular basis, and so when there are pain points within the game, I'm generally experiencing them myself. Um, again, I can't, for example, play all the classes and all the roles and all the specs, but I try to play a subset. Although I mentioned that Barbarian, for example, is my primary class, I do play a couple of alts off and on to check things out and try out some different roles. Like I play a Paladin Healer uh, infrequently as well, too, and go and do some trials occasionally with him just to check things out. And we're going to work very much, as like I said, if we can on improving sort of player quality of life in some of the key areas that we know. Um, it definitely said there's our sort of our new features and, and, and new modules definitely compete sometimes for time and resources. But we're going to try to strike a good balance uh, between identifying the biggest pain points for the people that care about the game a lot, especially a lot of people who will come out to a stream and, and check it out. We know that they're pretty invested in the game, um, while still trying to make sure that you know we can grow new players into the game. One of our initiatives that it's not here in the immediate term, but will be probably before end of year, I hope, is that we're going to look at trying to smooth over sort of the experience now that we've kind of done with Jewel and North. We improved, uh, hopefully, the leveling experience a good bit. We want to smooth over the, now that you're level 20, um, how do you work your way up to doing something you know like a, a very challenging trial or get geared up for vault of stars or something along those lines and smoothing over that you've hit level 20 now let's get you on a good path towards leveling up the vault of stars making sure that you know we can get new players much more seamlessly through the, through that experience understand what to do get cool gear and rewards etc um so that's part of trying to make it so that we can continue to grow the game get people into it and, and do a better job of of getting them through some of the cool content um, and for the for the players that are super dedicated and kind of pretty much do everything and, and have well, like I said, we're going to focus on as much as we can peeling time off to address some of the quality of life issues that everyone's brought up. And I know that there's, like I said, a, a number of those. And again, we can't uh, individually hit all of them, but we're going to do what we can to try to grow the game. Again, some of the new features will help and that's what will be required to fix things. But in some cases, it'll, it'll just be bug fixing and balance changes to try to improve stuff. And you know, when I say like things like balance changes, I also want to say like, for example, we're going to try to take an initiative where we're there are there may be things that are buggy, problematic, or broken that might require nerfs. But whenever we do those sorts of things, we're going to look very closely at the relative impact. And if necessary, to ensure that the game is still interesting, that, for example, if we have to buff, buff other things to to ensure an interesting meta, then that's what's really matters. Like you can't, if something's really good and everyone's using it and you nerf it, and it's still the only thing that everyone's using, then you haven't made the situation better. You may have solved some, some perceived balance issue, but you haven't made the game more interesting. So our goal is if we have to nerf something because it's the only thing that everyone's Using, then there needs to be something else out there that is a viable alternative choice so that you know players are trying to pick between different options and not just using a weaker version of the thing they were already using. Okay, thank you. Um, so there were also some other things put in the forums which weren't questions, they were just feedback that uh, you know I wanted to address some of that, you know, bring up some of that feedback. And one of them, which is also showing up in the chat right now, which is put enchant bar enchants in trade bar store. 
Yeah, we're, we'll be probably getting some form of a chance likely in the trade bar store. I can't promise on when, but it's something that's like, yeah, we know we need to modify that one um, and, and probably get it updated. I don't know if we're going to put max ranks and chance, though, in the trade bar store. It might be limited to something like, you know, rank one or rank two. I don't want to speak for what the systems team is thinking in that regard, but don't necessarily expect it to return in the exact same form that it did under the old system. It might be something closer to insignias where we pick sort of a dedicated rank uh, and put the enchantments in there in that. And I know I'm seeing a lot of stuff we are working on, like insignia, stacking, bugs. That's that's it's a known issue that's also on our list for trying to make sure that we fix. So, yeah, that's specifically something that's one of our big pain points that we're trying to figure out. Yep. Um, and then something else that's also come up in the past, uh, you know, past streams, past community feedback, which is uh, the greater shards needed to update collars is too high. So the number of them is too high. What are your thoughts on that? Um it's in yeah, that the the mount collar system was explicitly intended to be a sort of a very long tail issue thing something that you know you didn't really have to do but if you had if you'd ground out and done through gone through a lot of other systems it's something that you can then sort of engage with over a longer period of time and slowly kind of work your way through it but uh, the amount of time it would it realistically takes to kind of get through that is extremely high and obviously the benefits are very low we're talking about in a lot of cases only one percent increases in some very small stats at night time. So overall, yes, I agree that again, it's kind of one of those things where theoretically you could, you know, max out all your mount callers, but I don't, but we know from a combination of data and again, as well as anecdotal, that that's not something a lot of players engage in. A lot of players honestly just go with Epic and leave it at that, et cetera. So that's kind of the issue where it's like, we want to encourage players to engage with the system to some degree. And right now they're, most of them are just kind of ignoring it because the perceived costs are so crazy high. So we'll be looking at something that we can do with that. Uh, and kind of figure out where we can try to make that a bit better. Thank you. Um, so another question that's in the chat and um, something we've also seen before, which is, uh, do you see Neverwinter coming back to parallel mods of D&D? So in the past, we've released modules that uh, kind of ran at the same time as when uh, WotC, is, Wizards of the Coast, was releasing uh, uh, like new books, new content on their end as well. <laughs> so, and the other question that showed up in chat, which was, uh, you know, are we trying to sync up with, potential future releases in other media forms. <laughs> yeah, in general, I'll say that we are looking very much at how we can collaborate with Wizards of the Coast on future um, module releases, uh, marketing releases, TV shows, movies. They're working on a lot of various D&D kind of stuff. And it takes a decent bit of longer term planning because, you know, it, it, we can't, for example, like turn around a module in like three months just because they put out a new book. We kind of need to know way in advance, get some ideas for what they're trying to do. Same thing with movies and television. You know, we have a lot of experience here at Cryptic working with CBS on Star Trek, and it's tricky. It's not easy for us, you know, they're maybe working on like, you know, new episodes of Picard and whatnot. And we kind of, we, we keep asking them, like, can you tell us something about it? And they're like, we're still working on it. It's it's in flight and they'll try to give us, uh, you know, uh, a bit of information. But, you know, we often need to know more in advance. But we are going to try very much, both whether it's new modules, new movies, new television shows, whatever the media may be that's that Wizards is going to be doing for uh, Dungeons and Dragons, that Neverwinter is going to try to tie something in. It may not work out in all cases, simply because timings don't lie. Like they decide to put out something and we were already in the midst of something else and we couldn't make it line up. But we're working on some close relationship with Wizards and some of Wizards' close partners as well. And, you know, trying to tie up some, tie in some really good stuff for some upcoming modules. We have a plan for some near, some semi near future, not like, again, not in the next three months or something like that too, but we're working on some stuff perhaps here before end of year, maybe that might just be doing some things like that. Okay. Um, so Viral asked a question, which is a uh, part of it is the master of profession, which we've already talked about earlier. The other one was uh, any update on the mythic gear on preview. Uh, now, I just want, I do want to remind folks that what's on preview is things we're testing out, things we're looking at, so you're not going to automatically see it reflected in the live game, but I will let uh, Brett discuss a bit more. Yeah, so actually part of the rewards discussion we kind of had a little bit earlier, um, this is something that the systems team has been wanting to do, rather than try to keep necessarily all the rewards super secret and held to the vest there. It's a few things that they, they, they may still not intentionally showcase in the preview server, but they're looking at trying to publish um, some of the rewards to the preview server ahead of time a bit so they can gather more feedback on it and engage the viability, especially for things that might be targeted um, more towards uh, end game players that have like a lot of, you know, sort of like very like binary choices. Whereas for some players like, you know, they're just happy to get an upgrade for the end game players. It's very much like, no, I can, I have access to all the items in the game. I want to, I'll give you feedback as to, you know, how this compares and how it directly competes against other items in the game. So I'll tell you if I will never use it, if I'll only use it in some cases or if I'll always use it. And that's why you're seeing some of these things show up on preview now um 
we want to put in a little bit better messaging to that. And so we're trying to make sure that the uh, so the systems teams coordinates with Julia and our other marketing people to let them know, hey, this is what we're doing. We're kind of getting some stuff out um, and we'll, we'll, but we'll make that a bit more of a formal process. So we're not going to try to hold all of the words as close to our vest and make sure that they get more community feedback and interaction with them at an early point when we still have time to make changes. Um, but the systems teams might still be holding some things back. So don't expect the rewards that go live uh, with future updates to reflect exactly what's on the previous server, but, and also don't expect those to be the only rewards. Um, so words of caution, but if something does show up on the preview server, in a lot of cases, it's because we're trying to get feedback on it. And we want, you know, honest opinions. If you think something is terrible and unusable and is directly inferior to something else that your role already uses in that slot, let us know. But keep in mind, for example, you know, our, our rewards team is trying to design, design for a number of use cases. It's not just super end game trials. You know, they're not trying to build every item just to be useful in Crown of Kelganon. They're trying to build stuff for solo players, they're trying to build stuff for healers, et cetera, in so those situations too. Thank you. Um, and then uh, something, another um, questions that work well together between the forums and then chat. Uh, chat is asking a lot about, you know, um, content, like more content like events. And then on in the forums, they had asked about, will events like Portobello's or Call to Arms ever come back? All right, then. Cool. I can at least give some spoilers um, in some areas. We are looking at older events and some of the ones that we've had in the past, specifically Call to Arms has come up recently in discussions. There are some problems, not say problems, but there's some some there's some work going to be that will have to be invested into Call to Arms, specifically the, the skirmishes themselves. You know, the Call to Arms systems um, is uh, well understood, but the specific skirmishes that comprise Call to Arms, some of them are in good shape and some of them require more work. So we have to do a bit of a sort of an audit to see kind of what do we still like about some of the Call to Arms maps and what are the ones that we kind of don't like that just weren't that good or and whatnot but we'll be seeing if we can revise some of those and bring them back with a, a friendlier system likely we're trying to tie uh, events into the appointment system we kind of call the appointment system but sort of the event vendor that sells all the a lot of various stuff for the different types of currencies if you're playing harvester right now you know what i mean the, the various tokens of participation future events like siege of neverwinter how we migrated that to using that system other ones will be migrating to use that vendor we're going to try to make that vendor a bit bit more flexible so we can use it for shorter and longer events too um so a lot of stuff and specifically, someone mentioned Portobello. Um, with respect to the the larger sort of campaign slash event, which we call Day of the Dungeon Master. Day of the Dungeon Master is back. It will be showing up, and players will have a chance to run through Day of the Dungeon Master again sometime in the next several months. And we are looking closely at all the various unique rewards that came with Day of the Dungeon Master and trying to make sure that there are various avenues to get all of the old things that, you know, were sort of exclusively only available in Day of the Dungeon Master, as well as ensuring that it ties into the aforementioned appointment system. So just by participating and doing some of the fun activities in the Day of the Dungeon Master, you can, you know, get progress towards getting tokens of various types as well. So it will tie into all those things. We'll bring be bringing back um, a number of these sort of unique little mini instances in Day of the Dungeon Master and just sort of the very general kind of fun activities that you can do um sort of on the if you remember the old board game map i was very lucky that i played neverwinter the last time day of the dungeon master was run and managed to get through all the campaigns and stuff and i'm personally going to be super excited to see it making its return uh, i it's also a fun anecdote for people um uh, so when we've been doing some play, uh, internal play tests on day of the dungeon master and i don't know how i manage this but when i'm running the uh the traps dungeon I'm terrible. Like I just I can't evade anything. But the race, uh, I will go through that race so fast. So I don't know. I, one of these days I'm gonna have to. I, when the event starts up again, I'll do a stream so all you can see, you know, how how I fare in uh, in these in these types of uh, events. Um, so speaking of like releases and stuff, one of the questions has also come up, which you know kind of can be summed up as. What is our release uh, cadence? Is there a plan to release content faster, make it more in depth? Uh, you know, I, I noticed in the past couple of years, we, you know, our, we've kind of uh, switched the cadence a little bit. We've explored different types of release cadences. So I don't know if you had any thoughts on what it's going to look like moving forward. Uh, so release cadence, you know, we kind of have a, an initial plan right now. We're, we're we're hoping, you know, a long time ago at some point they've we've done anywhere from I think four to two different sort of major releases per year, um, and we're likely going to stick to some degree of that here in the near future. We're doing what we can to figure out, you know, uh, sort of with our various manpower and capacity plans to, in terms of what we can get. Some releases take a little bit more than others, and sometimes we're fine with that. So I'm not going to say, like, cool, we will always do three releases a year, because if we decide to do a slightly more complex release, we might only do two that year if we absolutely had to. But we're going to try to get roughly into a, a state of, I would prefer, if we could do roughly three years. So, you know, maybe a little bit more. But I hope 
hope as well that apart from just sort of the three bigger releases that we're doing, we'll be able to do some smaller updates, put out some more of the mentioned, like I mentioned, some of the updates to various events, as well as potentially future season passes and things like that as well, that will uh, fill in some of the gaps between the releases. I'm not going to say promise and say we're going to be able to go back and do four releases because sometimes those were um, very challenging and very difficult for the developers to get everything done. And I certainly would like to avoid going down anything like only one release or even two releases per year. But timing wise, it'll it'll take uh, a bit to uh, to get some of these things out. But again, I, I personally would like to see three. And then, like I said, it's w between that one, doing a lot of sort of like interstitial things that we can do to spice things up. Uh, are we going to continue like the episodic episodic content type of release where we uh, uh, we, we kind of release uh, um, Adventure Zone or mo like the module storyline in chunks. Like we kind of did something similar with uh, the Scale Blight Summit. The fourth neighborhood was released after the launch. Is that something we're still looking to do, like break it up into, into episodes? We look at that as an option, but to note, and I'll kind of give some pros and cons. Um, Sharndar, which was done in a very episodic format, um, it presented a lot of internal development challenges, and that was what the, the biggest headache there was less about us sort of understanding how we wanted to do episodes and present them to the players, but internally, technology-wise, it made it very challenging for us to maintain um, the unique sort of number of branches, the unique states, and ensure that we weren't, for example, leaking things out or clobbering things in the, in the previous episodes while working on new episodes, etc. So it was a it was a big challenge for us internally. So we're not likely to go back to that sort of like within a single module or within a single adventure zone, trying to do multiple episodes on top of it um, in very close succession like that. It was a it was a big challenge and it, it, it put a lot of stress on the team. Now with the Dragon Bone Veil and the Scale of Light Summit, etc., that worked out a little bit better because some of those things were developed in parallel and we kind of wanted to try it's like, cool, what happens if we put sort of like the epilogue or conclusion to Dragon Bone Veil out as a sort of separate mini adventure that you can kind of do. And that was a bit of testing some of the waters with that. And that went a lot smoother. It was much less painful than, than uh, development-wise than the sharing our episodes. And so there's the potential for something along those lines that we could continue. Now, again, there is a limit. Um, like I said, it was a lot easier to do the, the final thing as a, as a component of Dragon Bone Veil as its own separate section. And we might be able to do things like epilogues or prologues in a similar vein uh, that we can do for future story releases where maybe we can release like a prologue a little bit early and then that's that's separated out enough that it doesn't you know conflict with work that we're doing on the rest of the module great but we're going to play with that and see what we can kind of do but uh, i would not expect to see something in the way that sharndar was done again especially with with a ton of unique uh sort of episodes within a single zone like that but we might be doing something a little bit more akin to something like scale by summit or something a little bit different from that too um in with future modules uh getting a number of comments about uh dragon bone veil like you know people seem to enjoy the story and the zone uh and one of the questions that uh, has come up in the past is uh you know the the grappling mechanic uh do we have any plans on using that mechanic in other areas of the game so the grappling mechanic is a lot of fun and i enjoy it you're talking to someone that has played a lot of video games with grappling uh with grapple hooks in them uh especially a lot of shooters and i love them so uh it's a lot of fun and you know it's a sort of zone specific mechanic the way that it's set up and implemented is it's that's not something that would be for example easiest for us to translate into all zones or make as a core part of neverwinter now that being said um, because it's been well received and because it allows us some fun and interesting traversal options, both in the way of sort of shortcuts and in the way of Z axis, we are very much looking at the grappling hook having um, an expanded role in future zones and, and future things that we do. We've even discussed potentially, if, if necessary, by retrofitting it to certain other zones where it would make contextual sense, but um, that's a bit tough again because it sort of occupies uh, that sort of key play power slot. It, it won't work in all zones, unfortunately, because we can only do that in some cases. We obviously can only have one of those powers active for usability reasons, so we can't just grandfather it in everywhere, plus we'd have to place like grapple points, etc. But there's a few places where we thought like, you know, it would actually be really cool if we did that, and there isn't anything currently conflicting that would prevent us from doing this, so hey, maybe we could do it here. And especially as we look at future zones, we're definitely thinking like, cool, what would be an interesting way of le le leveraging the grapple hook here, and etc., and what can we do with that? So, big fan of it. It, it went over very well. Um, I enjoyed grappling about Dragon Bone Veil quite a bit, and hopefully we'll have some opportunities in future modules to, to leverage that probably maybe not as, as widespread as something like dragon bone veil where it was a key feature but we'll see again it, it was very real it was it's a lot of fun so uh so actually cough the sickness uh, said please let us grapple in pe so just i had a little side comment on that because uh i am uh, uh i'm producing a feature where we actually explored that we explored uh putting some grappling in pe and it's just a lot more work involved uh than we had uh time to do but it is something we've looked at so 
Um, it's won't just, rule it out then, because yeah. I'll, I'll say Protector's Enclave is one of the few sort of areas that's trafficked enough that there's a lot of payoff. Like putting it in zones that don't get a lot of a throughput, it's a little less good for a time. But if Protector's Enclave winds up, you know, obviously it's just a, it's the general hangout hub. Um, it's something that, you know, if it does take a little bit more time, we can't necessarily do it quickly. And we need to make sure that we obviously don't break anything since Protector's Enclave is kind of an important map. <laughs> but uh, so it's not something we're going to rush on, but it's also not because of the, the throughput there. It's something we can look at. Okay. Uh, so there's a question that showed up in um, the chat, and it's over from Spawn UK. Is there any consideration for development or reworking of the lesser systems, such as achievements, collections, a staple part of an MMO, but seemingly overlooked? And I think this is what we call internally the quality of life. Uh, yeah, features. and we have looked at some of those. Again, there's a, there's a number of systems that, based on you know, sort of player expectations, that we have looked at. Achievements is actually something specifically that we've discussed too. Um, but obviously, there's a number of ones. I've mentioned more than a few of them here in today's stream. And the hope is that we will start tackling some of those, carving time out to ensure that we hit uh, a few of those, um, you know, throughout uh, throughout the year. But I can't promise any specific one because we go through a series of like pros and cons, both on like how valuable is it to the players, um, and, and also, but also how much dev time will actually take to do it. Some of them, for example, might be only moderate value to players, but very easy for the devs to do. So we kind of jump on those sometimes ahead of time. Other ones might be high value to players, but also a very large development and investment. And so it's like, cool, we can't we can't just do this on a whim. We've got to actually plan out some more time ahead to make it happen. Even if the, the payoff or another thing is a little bit lower because we can get it done very quickly and easily, it's, it's worth us doing. Whereas the ones that require big stuff, we have to kind of like know in advance, like it's time to tackle some of those. Achievements is one of those ones that would take a bit more effort. It's not something that we could change over over quickly we can fix individual achievements and we can solve problems at a per achievement level but a, a new achievement system for example something that we're like okay we're gonna have to plan this out fairly decently in advance understand what we want to do and make some improvements to it well thank you uh there was a, a question uh just uh, a fun one which is uh people want to know about the uh the dog they hear in the background um i have a couple of dogs um they are named Millie and Gabe. Um, they're both mutts, both uh, very slight sort of pit mixes, and they like to bark at things in the background. Millie is about 45 pounds, and she's very cute, and Gabe is about 60 pounds and also pretty cute. Mm -hmm. And uh, They're hanging out with me today since I'm the only person in the house. So currently still working uh, remotely here out of the homes. We're, we're going to be hopefully reopening some of our offices in, in Los Gatos. There's definitely people still work there, like our IT and other key people that have to be on site. Um, but we'll, I think we're maybe finally at the point where people will start coming more regularly back into Cryptic Studios. Okay. Uh, do you have time for a couple more questions? or? Yeah, let's go right ahead. I mean, okay. if, people want, if people want to stick around and ask, I'll stick around and answer. Cool. Um, uh, there's a, so a number of questions that also came up in the forums that I'm seeing here, and it's a little bit, it's tough to capture all because there's a lot of questions regarding individual uh, issues with different classes or uh, people ask about, you know, the, there's, there's a lot of classes people ask about, so it's kind of hard to address every single one. Uh, and we, we you know, we you talked about it a little bit earlier about kind of taking it one class at a time. Um, and you also talked about how we look at, you know, how, how much information metrics really give us. Uh, so not to repeat the entire answer, but, um, you know, the question is, is it possible to balance the classes? So from oh. your perspective, what does that mean? That's a that, that's a tough one. You know, we we don't want all the classes to be able to do everything that every other class does. Otherwise, there's a little loss of uniqueness. But at the same time, it's we don't make like unlimited varieties of content. We obviously have trials, we have dungeons, we have adventure zones, and there's some core things that we build. And the classes should have avenues for succeeding in those different things that we do. Um, you know, if we're going to put out like really hard trials like like the crown, um, you know, we classes need a way to succeed at that. That doesn't mean that we can make every single possible, for example, power, like daily power and counterpower, whatever, viable in those sorts of things. But we need to make sure that there's interesting and meaningful choices for each of the classes. So what we're trying to do is, is figure out a way to, you know, like I said, improve balance and such that there are more meaningful choices, especially for classes that have very little in some of those cases. I know, like I said, I mentioned obviously that the minstrel needs help. And then there's some discussions too on the wizard, especially between the, uh, the arcanist and the thaumaturge in terms of where's useful and what, and we want to separate that out. And I know, for example, people mention a lot in terms of like paladins too. And yes, when paladins are also on the list for some improvements as well. While they are often important and viable, they don't necessarily have a whole lot of choice right now in terms of sort of the things that they do and when they do it, because they have a couple of very powerful sort of bread and butter abilities and not a whole lot of necessary variety outside of that. So um, players want to know if we can have a dragon mount like Elminster has. 
<laughs> we're very much obviously interested in, in potentially having some degree of dragon mounts. It would probably have to be a very you know young dragon. There there are some space limits in terms of how big we can make mounts. So flying around or riding around on a uh, you know big ancient dragon might be a bit much um, to hit with the constraints of the, the current mount system without a without a significant rework. But we'll look at something you know maybe dragon s that we can do for future releases. Um, and then a couple things that go together, which is, um, and, um, it's, it's a bug that, uh, that, you know, people have asked about in the past, which is why are old enchants still being handed out? And what is our plan for the chests that are now empty because they used to grant enchants? And it, uh, go, it goes along with what about Timora's enchantment? Will you bring something similar back? Um, I can't comment too much on Timora's enchantment. We were looking at sort of the, there was a couple of sort of like, you know, uh, event specific enchantments that we'll want to try to come up with a solution for so as we we come back to those events we'll try to hit them and see okay can we do something unique here is there something interesting we could do with some of these event specific enchantments do we want to go down that realm or or not we'll, we'll make some calls as we get to those the enchantments being from old systems uh, are problems we have a, a you know bugs basically things that we need to to clean up and it's a bit of an oversight unfortunately for the refinement update that we didn't manage to catch all the places where those were being awarded the specific chests known issues have them documented we'll be trying to get to those specifically i know there's some i think some like tyranny dragon ones and whatnot that are they're specifically affected in, in some other areas so we all those are quote unquote at this point now bugs that will be addressed and and even same thing with some of like the older glyphs i know that there's i'm not glyphs marks of potency like places where those still appear too and they're no longer useful those will be all cleaned up and and taken out as well so i can't do anything but apologize that those weren't all caught in sort of the uh, initial refinement system pass but we'll be going through and cleaning all those up as as quickly as we can get to them all over here in the next several months thank you um there's also a combination of questions, which is, uh, you know, Frogger had asked, are champions of, the hall, uh, champions of the Hall companions coming back to the Zen store? I'm also seeing questions about, you know, um, what else are we going to put in the Zen store? What, what are we going to offer players that they're going to want to spend their money on? So something like the companions of the Hall are likely to come back at some point. Uh, apologies, I kind of had a little bit of a lag there for a second if it looks like I froze. Uh, but Companions Hall are likely to come back at some point, um, you know, especially if we wind up doing anything sort of themed around them uh, in, the, in the near future. But uh, as a whole, we'll, we'll look at sort of making sure that they're that, you know, the, we don't want to have anything that just comes out and is only ever released once and then is never available ever, ever again, especially if it's something that we do in MTX. So just, but it's also something that we'll probably keep on a fairly low reoccurrence cadence. So it'll be a fairly unique event when when those sorts of things do come back. Um, I'm sorry, what was the next one you said? Oh, uh, uh, player, just, you know, what what other stuff are we thinking of releasing that players will want to spend their money on? Like, you know, have what have we considered? Um, what do we consider when thinking of things to put on the Zen store? Uh, so, well, for example, and this kind of relates to the quality of life things, we are looking at a couple of improvements to certain things um, in terms of exp uh, offering new storage expansion things related to the bank, relating to bags, relating to appearance items. And so those are some of the, like, what are, I don't call them services or whatnot, um, but expansionary things that we can give that players have been asking for. They'll take a little bit of technical work because we have to verify that we can handle sort of the additional loads on a on a per uh, a character basis. But we're looking at some expansions to things that will also are combinations, quality of life improvements, as well as some things like. For example, I really, really, really want to increase the professions holdings. <laughs> so I am full on profession stuff, especially after collecting some stuff from Schult and a few other areas. So I'm like, oh man, I need I need more profession storage. In particular, I'm tired of uh, dealing with it. You know, we have a you know, that's part of what we want to make sure also happens if before we get into doing anything master work wise, trying to expand that out. So then, and yes, I know that some of the people are suggesting various quality of life improvements for the various bags. And yes, we are looking at, like I said, things that will allow you to do things like sell all, um, do better sorting, finding specific items, like say, hey, I just show me all my artifacts in my bags in case I had them scattered over multiple bags, et cetera, things like that. So there's a there's a more advanced, our UX people proposed some some great improvements but that's again that's more quality of life that's not necessary services in the short term we're continuing to planning on sell some of the things that we do you know um as far as the various uh various things everything that we sell mounts lock boxes all the kind of stuff you see currently in the store and we're looking at you know changing around some of the things that are in the store periodically you know for a long time there the store was sort of like it kept growing but it wasn't really managed and curated and so we're likely to have some like rotating selections of a few things both in the store and perhaps in the wondrous bazaar as well to help uh, create some more useful ad things you know we're taking a good look at what we offer and things like the astral lockbox as well you may have noticed that we put some changes into what was offered in the astral lockbox and that was a direct response to cool let's shake it up and let's try to get some access to some things that were in there and we know some of it was controversial and to some extent we we anticipate a little bit of that but we're trying things out to see what we can do to incentivize people to both buy things for astral diamonds as well as things for zen um so it's been mentioned a couple times um uh, are there any plans for player housing 
No, unfortunately, there are no plans for player housing right now. That's not to say never, but it's not on the current sort of year roadmap. It's something that, you know, if if we wanted to, that we could look more into it. If it's something we could do as part of perhaps uh, a guild or a stronghold update, then that would be also something that would be kind of along those lines. It's cool if we could, you know, revise stronghold and simultaneously work in something like player housing as a section of strongholds. Yeah, that would be kind of the way we would want to approach something along those lines and sort of that big thing. I know there's some other questions. I'll just do a quick shotgun of some of the other mm -hmm. things people ask about. Yep. Talking about PvP, no current plans for PvP, unfortunately. We do have at least one specific sort of PvP focus feature, sorry, PvP focused feature that is not currently in the near term pipeline. Um, it's something that's a little bit farther out, and we're going to see what we can do with it. Um, but we may do look some look at ways to improve um, or, or grant access to some of the glory based rewards and some of the other things like too that are somewhat cordoned off if you can't get consistent PvP going. So we'll see what we can do with that, at least to make to have some avenues of working towards that. And then let's see, um, Dragon Eggs, I don't have a comment on that right now. That sadly that came in before, but uh, we'll look if possible here in the future of putting ways for more consistent, for especially people that want to have that collection mentality for going through and trying to go back and recollect the Dragon Eggs, try to figure out a way to handle that so that it's a more kind of going with sort of like the taking out some of the randoms and adding more consistent ways to handle that. But that's not currently a, a major effort. And I know some people were talking about stuff like, oh, Zuna and getting nerfed and stuff like that too. We'll look at it. You know, I have a Zuna as well. I got it from a Juma bag of all things. Um, and as we look at companions, you know, we have some companions, unfortunately, that occasionally have powers that are problematic. Um, Zuna's was definitely problematic from the standpoint that, you know, it was doing extremely high single target damage and extremely high multi-target damage. But the way the state in which Zuna's at right now isn't great in either of those categories. And that's something that we'll look at down the road. As we look at new companions, again, we don't want to continue just nerfing things without making sure that we have viable other options. For example, we don't want to, for example, nerf uh, a specific companion and then drive everybody to whatever the next thing is that that does almost the exact same thing, but but uh, you know only slightly less. Um, we want to ensure that there's a good viable pool, and especially as we release new companions, trying to make sure that they they have some kind of new role uh, or some kind of useful role in terms of well, you know, in this situation, this companion would be really good, or in this situation, this companion would be really good. Whether it's a support companion, one that just increases the the sort of the 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 power of the party as a whole, something that is just really good for when you're a solo player running around, or something that's you know good for uh, specific roles like tanking, healing, DPS, whatever the case may be. So we're going to try to make sure that we carve out unique. New for companions going forward and we ensure that when we put it out we kind of have a good you know baseline understanding of like, hey this companion is supposed to fill in this niche and it's reasonably good at this niche doesn't always have to be the best but hopefully at least has some unique characteristics that make it viable in that space uh, and for the companions that currently fill no niches and really aren't viable in any of the spaces those are great targets for buffing and trying to make better and to kind of bring back into the meta you know we don't always have to release new companions in some cases there's a number of companions that are hard to obtain and it's difficult to get that by simply improving and making much more viable we could add a lot of value to them and bring them back into the useful game cool um so it's 1226 i figured we'll go for Four more minutes, um, sure. and then I will I will make sure you leave with a promise of coming back for another stream. <laughs> um, but uh, there were a couple things when it, when someone said, "Please introduce gnomes as a playable race in the game." Uh, I, you know, I at some point I very much hope that we have gnome monks running around in the game uh, and all the things that you know you can do in D and D. I hope that we can truly support, but I can't uh, promise any of those right now. You know, I, it's something that uh, may be on the list. Gnomes are not the most popular of races, unfortunately, in terms of player picks for traditional D&D. &D. So I won't say never, but, you know, the, the various races can be a reasonable amount uh, of work to make sure that, hey, we have a lot of great uh, sort of like, you know, visual customization options, as well as making sure that they work correctly with all our various armor sets, et cetera, and those sorts of things. So it's a decent bit of work. We want to make sure that we can get it. And same thing with new classes. Classes are obviously a lot of work. You can see with, you know, with the bar that it definitely is a lot of Effort and there's and we want to make sure that any class we just had to tackle we had we have enough time. I think that for example the bard would have benefited for some more um, closed testing before we put it out to identify some more of the issues and perhaps look at some of the longer term balance as well. And I hope that if we do tackle something like the monk or the druid, you know we can kind of get the uh, a, a better more robust release for it here as we as we move forward. But that being said, that's why you know we're not going to just jump in and sort of tackle those um, straight out of the gates. We want to make sure that we've got a good plan in place for how to execute on those, and we appreciate how much time it took uh, to get the bard, as well as what it would take to to do the next class even better. Mm -hmm. uh, foundry, um, what's up with Foundry? <laughs> so the Foundry is dead. Long live the Foundry. Yeah. Um, there are no initiatives to bring it back, and it's not because players didn't like it or it didn't offer some really cool stuff. You know, I was on the I've been playing Neverwinter long enough to have actually done stuff in the Foundry. Um, it's all from a development standpoint, unfortunately. The Foundry creates 
a huge burden um, development wise for maintenance as well as fixing issues. And it winds up being blunt, distracting the team from fixing things um, outside of the foundry. So for every time we're spending time fixing foundry specific issues, we are not fixing various other things or adding quality of life improvements to the game. So the decision was made well before I came on the project that the cost of supporting the foundry was so high that it was really detracting from the things that we could have done with the rest of the game. And that that's what really ended up making us uh, need to cut it out was that we just wanted to spend more time fixing and either developing new features for Neverwinter or fixing other live issues rather than spending so much time mired in the foundry, unfortunately. So, um, and um, then there was another question which was pu uh, public ser uh, test servers for console. Like right now, we have Mimic or Preview for yeah. PC. It's very much on our list. Um, um, it's something that the we have a centralized technology team at Cryptic, they're in favor of it and they're starting to look at how they can make it happen. Um, that's pretty much the summary of it, um, especially with, um, you know, we uh, being blunt, there were a lot of issues, especially with PlayStation uh, on our last release. Um, and those were unfortunately technical PlayStation plat PlayStation network specific only issues that we probably would have caught on a preview server on consoles, but were very difficult to catch in our testing environments. We actually did test those sorts of things, but some of them were very specific edge case issues that um, did not show up in our internal testing. So, um, the, a preview server for console is something that we're looking at seeing what we can do for it. Uh, all right. So we're going to wrap up with one final question, which is what is, what are your top three priorities as an EP? Uh, I, I kind of covered, I think a good bit of it here in some of the previous ones. Um, and some of these are not, not necessarily player facing. I'll, I'll comment on sort of like the player facing ones and, the, and there's developer facing ones. I think number one is ensuring um, developer wise that the Neverwinter team is happy in a good state. They like what they're working on and we're picking good stuff. And that we're also working, like I said, on developer quality of life tools and things that will allow them to work on stuff. Like if we want to make changes to professions, um, it's a lot of work right now. Why is it so much work? Is there anything that we can build tools wise that will help make that process easier so that it's easier for us to turn out, churn out more regular updates for it. So improving developer quality of life, which in the long run should make us make it easier for us to do uh, and build certain types of things. Second one, uh, player quality of life, making sure, like I said, that while we still have a schedule putting out new releases, putting out new new big modules and everything along those lines that we carve a subset of time out to just look at where we're at and what pain points are facing players and making sure that we make continuous regular progression. Those. Obviously, like I said, we've talked a lot about classes because I think classes are a Obviously, a sore point is the thing that players very directly engage with a lot. And there haven't been a whole lot of sort of class balance fixes, bug fixes, or other changes here to Neverwinter uh, over the past few years. We've done a lot of new systems and whatnot, but not a lot of like improving existing systems. So we're carving more time out directly going forward for improving existing systems. So we hope that we will still be able to put out a bunch of new um, systems and whatnot, but maybe slightly less new systems and more fixes and rebalances and updates to existing systems. Like I said, I mentioned, I, I hope that we can actually do some work on companions and, and take some of the companions that people rarely use since we have hundreds, literal hundreds of companions right now, but there's only a small subset of them we use. I'd love to to see that that amount. Real. I'm partial to companions just because I think they're really cool and I collect a lot of them. So I want to just try to get a, maybe a few more of them introduced. That doesn't mean making any of them uh, you know overpowered or anything, but just making sure that they have unique defined roles. Um, so those two key quality of life areas are sort of the big things. The next thing, though, is that we are going to be looking forward, you know, especially towards the end of this year and the next year about some bigger um, module updates and making sure that we can support some sort of grand big releases for Neverwinter um, later into this year and into next year. Next year is going to be the 10th anniversary, and we are working on some very cool things. Um, we have a lot of ideas, none of them official yet, <laughs> but we're going to try to do some really cool stuff for the 10th anniversary next year in particular. So that's sort of driving some of our longer term visions. Um, I'm not going to try to do a whole lot of shakeup in terms of I'm not going to promise something uh, crazy in terms of massive changes to the, the way in which Neverwinter is built. But as I mentioned with things like queues and things like that, too, um, we're going to try very hard to make sure that things that we build with Neverwinter going forward are you know built around ways that sort of players engage in it. If, they're gonna, if we want to build stuff and we have queues, we want to make sure that we're building stuff that will work in queues or some portion of what we build works really well in queues. And if, if it's not intended to be queues, if it's something new and something different, um, making sure that we we that we like how that plays out too and that's something that players can engage in as well um but hopefully for that's pretty much it for the most part um and i know some people also comment on things like stories yes we're looking at trying to do more story related i was hoping to see more resolution to the makos and celeste storyline as well but hasn't happened yet i can't force that in but i hope very much that we'll get to do some great storytelling in some of our upcoming modules again there's some plans in place for that 
larger out. We're trying to do some more advanced sort of longer term, maybe multi-module storytelling endeavors that will take a while to pan out, but it's something that not in the next several months, but something for maybe the end of the year and going into next year. Well, thank you so much. Uh, it was wonderful to have you. Uh, thank you for giving us a little bit of extra time. Um, and I hope that you can come back on a stream because players seem to enjoy asking questions and, uh, you know, have, getting some more information. So uh, we would love to have you back again. And sure. And I'll, I'll plan to be back with hopefully a fairly regular occurrence, you know, um, as time permits. Obviously, the more time I spend in stream, sadly, the less time I, I get out. But I'll try to make sure that I have a, a pretty regular communication here with the community. And if you have uh, questions, comments and things. And um, I always recommend, you know, if you have a problem or if you have a bug, um, don't always assume that we know it. And, you know, make take advantage of the bug report forms and try to put in like fairly detailed explanations. It doesn't have to be super long, but just say, hey, don't just say like thing is broken. You can say like, hey, you know, when I use this power, I expect it to do X and it's doing Y instead. Or it's just not doing X at all because that can help us isolate and track down down specifically what's going on there because um, surprisingly some of our bugs are very specific to you know exact loadout combinations or only occur in specific content etc so the the more uh, more detail we get on those the, the faster that we can act on some of those and especially when it's something related to like class powers especially when it's something that's inconsistent or doesn't happen all the time let us know it's like hey you know 10 percent of the time when i use this this encounter power on on the paladin it doesn't do this thing um and, you know can you fix that it'd be really great if it was 100 percent consistent instead of only doing it 90 percent of the time so great stuff for like that too yeah. and and keep it up you know um like i said uh, appreciate all the the support and feedback and let us know if there are, are areas that you know in terms of quality of life for the number winner players that you value more than others we well, you know i've seen a lot of random comments in the chat here and, this, and whatnot about what some of the things are and hopefully we'll hit some of those like i said you know we talked about some things like expanding appearance slot uh, inventories for players that have tons of appearance items etc and we'll see what we can do with that yeah. so and again i hope you have a little map out sometime here i'm not going to make a promise here in the short term since we are in the midst of some current module development that's very important and critical um and we want to make sure that that lands well that we're you know the next module that we put out is is great um but we will try to get a pretty a more forward-thinking roadmap so you guys kind of see where we're going with it without revealing too many spoilers here. Um, you know, we're going to have to announce the sort of next module um, after the current one. We have the current one, which will probably more marketing will be happening very shortly. <laughs> but then the one after that, which is which is a much longer term, you know, hopefully we'll be able to start announcing some stuff. And we're even looking at the one even beyond that. So mm -hmm. three modules out is kind of where our planning is going right now. And I hope you'll be able to give something out for that soon. Cool. Well, everybody take care. Um, stay safe. Uh, and... I'll see you guys some other time. Thank you, everybody. All right. See Bye. ya. Thanks, everyone.